Today we have some more testing and discussion on Coolmaster's new awesome ITX case, the NR200. And if you missed the initial review that I uploaded last week, you can find that linked down below in the description. In summary though, this is easily one of the best mainstream ITX cases that you can buy right now, offering some serious cooling and hardware compatibility at a very affordable price point. And I do just want to address that price point because in the initial review, I did say this case was 60 US dollars but you look everywhere online and it's 80 US dollars. So I was told the morning of the review that $60 was the number, but unfortunately that looks incorrect. That doesn't really change the conclusion of the NR200 though, and I still think that's an extremely fair price for what you're getting. Today though, I really wanna see if it's worth spending the extra $20 on top of that to get the vertical GPU support and the additional tempered glass side panel. So we've got some more testing to look at today. Let's take a look. So I think for a lot of people, this tempered glass panel and vertical GPU layout is super appealing because it does create a very interesting and visually appealing compact build, one that showcases the most expensive component in your system. And I think most users will consider spending that extra $20 over the base model NR200 for these extra parts because you are getting some very decent value here. The tempered glass side panel is well made and fits completely flush with the rest of the case. And for vertical GPU mounting, they do include a nice short PCIe riser cable. But before we talk about this vertical GPU layout, I do wanna take a couple of steps back and just quickly address what air cooling would look like in the default NR200 layout, seeing as that's something that I did get quite a few questions on. Because in my initial review, I did say the Noctua NHU12A did just fit with a height of 156 millimeters. But after a closer look, it'll only fit with the vented panel. The tempered glass side panel sits closer to the interior of the case, and so the cooler height there is a bit shorter. It's closer to 153 mils or so. Also, the NHU12A doesn't fit if you're planning on mounting the side bracket. For example, for an extra couple of drives or an extra fan, cooler height clearance there is shorter still at around 150 mils. Still though, I wanted to see what kind of thermal and noise performance we could expect with the biggest air cooler that you can technically fit in this case. So using the exact same test system with our 10 core 10900K, CPU thermals with the NHU12A are just okay, lending us at around 80C and 41.4 dBA. If you are picking up the NR200 for a more entry-level to mid-range gaming system, cheap to mid-range tower air coolers are still totally viable in this case. But if you're looking for the best CPU thermal and noise performance that you can get, your best option would be a 280ml liquid cooler and running that at around a more moderate speed like 1100 RPM. Now let's take a look at the vertical GPU layout of the NR200P, which which is a fairly easy thing to set up thanks to the pre-installed vertical GPU slots and included riser cable. The biggest change for CPU cooling is that your only real option here is a bottom mounted 120mm or 240mm liquid cooler. In total, I measured 67 millimeters of clearance underneath the GPU riser cable, so all of your common 240mm AIOs should fit. That also means that if you're considering doing a custom loop in this case, you could fit a 40mm thick Coolstream PE radiator from EK Waterblocks, along with a pair of 25mm thick fans. That should give you some pretty strong cooling performance. The other consequence of this vertical layout is the fact that your graphics card height is now reduced from 156mm down to around 140mm, including those power connectors, if you're also running those top mounted fans. Those fans are critical when it comes to exhausting the hot air from the graphics card, so I'd highly recommend staying under that limit. Graphic Graphics card length isn't affected in this vertical position though, still around 330 millimeters, and thankfully two slot cards do have a bit of clearance against that glass panel. Technically, you could run up to a three slot card here, but the closer you get to that glass panel, the worse your GPU thermals will be. And while you could technically pair this vertical GPU layout with the vented panel, there really isn't much point to doing this. Visually, at least, I think Cooler Master have done some excellent work here, and combined Combining all of the elements of the NR200P together, I could see a lot of you leaning towards this for your builds. But how does this setup perform in terms of thermals and noise? 
Well, it's actually not that bad at all, and I think the reason for that are those top two exhaust fans, which remove a lot of the heat from the graphics card and from the interior. The result here for our RTX 2070 Super Founders Edition is viable, and is a result that you could run if you care more about the way your build looks, as opposed to running it as cool and quiet as possible, which is usually my personal preference. Compared to the stock NR200 configuration, the GPU runs 7 degrees warmer and also slightly louder. When we swap the tempered glass panel for the vented one, more noise can now escape through that side panel and the GPU is now both 3C warmer than the stock NR200 while running at 45.5 dBA versus 43.2 dBA. Essentially, running this vertical GPU setup with a vented panel is kind of pointless. Your gaming system will be louder and hotter and there's no visual improvement trade-off that you'd get with that tempered glass side panel. The other side of this vertical GPU layout though is that bottom mounted 240mm radiator for the CPU and here I was very surprised again, I expected much worse thermal performance than what we're getting here. In fact if we compare the same cooler and fan speed here against the NCASE M1, we're around 3 degrees C cooler and slightly louder at 47.2 dBA. The reason for this are again those top two exhaust fans which the NR200 can afford to fit because it is after all around 40% larger in volume than the M1. The airflow setup that I ran for this test was with the bottom mounted radiator fans pulling in air through the bottom and then the top of course exhausting. This setup is only made viable thanks to those top exhaust fans so if you're planning on doing this vertical GPU setup those top exhaust fans are an absolute must. Personally, I did not expect this tempered glass and vertical GPU setup to be viable at all, but thanks to the generous airflow within the case and the spacing between the graphics card and the glass panel, this is something that can work. At the end of the day, if you do go with the NR200P, you can try this setup if you like, and if you do find your GPU running a bit on the warmer end, you can always switch back to the stock layout for better performance. Also, I will quickly mention that Cooler Master are releasing an 850 watt 80 plus gold SFX power supply. Not really sure on the pricing for this one, but for those who for whatever reason need that much power overhead in an SFX form factor, keep an eye out for this one in the near future. So with all of the performance testing out of the way for the NR200, I think it's time to start planning a custom loop for this case. And seeing how this configuration works so well, it's got me really thinking of a bottom mounted radiator setup with a vertical GPU hardline loop. So if you're interested in seeing that, do hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you're interested in picking up the NR200 or NR200P, I will leave that linked down below in the description. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one.